Hello everyone, this is Alex with Kodiak Woodcraft. In today's video, we're going to be building a screech owl nesting box, much like this one. This is a simple project and it doesn't require much woodworking experience or even tools to complete. You will see power tools in the video walkthrough, but just keep in mind that every one of these steps can be adapted to hand tools if that's what you have available. I also took the opportunity to use up some less than stellar cedar stock and you may find value in doing the same. We'll go through the build process next and then circle back at the end of the video to go over the things that we need to know if we actually want to attract and make this a comfortable home for screech owls. This owl house will be built out of cedar and I'm making all of my cuts on the miter saw. You could do this by hand, but this makes for more repeatable angles. I'm going to start by cutting the side panels to size. This saw's 22.5 degree preset was perfect and convenient for the angled roof line. The stock that I'm working with is serviced on one side, so I'll take care throughout the project to make sure that I'm consistently facing the surfaced side outward. After cutting the side panel's top edge, I'm ready to measure and cut it to final size. This side piece does need to be tall. I went with a full two feet. Once the first side panel is cut, it's quick and easy to trace its partner. No measurement necessary. This is where you can start to see that this cedar stock is quite warped. This is the perfect project to use this stuff up. Now I'm going to cut this one down and at this point we have our two opposing side panels. The next thing I'm going to do is cut the back panel. Again, no measuring here. I'm simply going to reference one of the side panels and mark my cuts accordingly. I'm going to put the miter saw to good use and cross cut the top at the same angle that I mitered the sides. Now that the sides and back are done, I'm going to cut a 16 inch front panel and finally a roof. I used angled cross cuts for the roof as well and made sure to overhang it by at least three quarters of an inch. At this point, I was almost done prepping stock. I went ahead and cut a loose fitting bottom piece and used some scraps to create some supports for the floating floor. After cleaning up the mess from the miter saw, I started to prepare for assembly. I wanted to keep this project simple, so I chose to screw it together. I'm being careful to pre-drill the front, back, and roof panels because I'm working close to the edge of the material and it can be susceptible to cracking. I'm also using a small Forstner bit to countersink the screws. Once I have all of the stock pre-drilled, I'm on to assembly. You'll see that I'm using a clamp and a fair amount of persuasion when assembling the four sides, and that's because this cedar is so gnarly. For most projects, this wouldn't fly, but for an owl house, it's no big deal. Once the four sides are assembled, I'm simply centering the roof as best I can and attaching it as well. Next, I'm attaching those cutoffs for the floating floor support. We definitely don't need a precision fit here. If anything, a little bit of space is good to help keep the interior of the house dry. I chose to attach these from the inside to avoid having another screw visible on the exterior. Finally, I cut four corners off the floor piece, again because I don't want a watertight floor. I'm also measuring for center, pre-drilling a hole, and then attaching a hook eye to the floor piece. This allows us to empty the whole thing out from the bottom if it's ever necessary, as well as to make sure that the floor is properly seated. Now that most of our owl house is together, I'm doing a little bit of sanding just to knock off any slivers and to remove my pencil marks. Once we're done sanding, I'm ready to finish the roof. If you don't want to leave the roof bare, you have a few options. I probably would have preferred cedar shingles but I happened to have this stick-on shingle roll, which was a nice fit for the project. I went ahead and cut it down to size with a razor blade, and then actually created pilot holes for my nails. I wouldn't do this with a nice drill bit because the shingle really gummed it up, but I wanted to make absolutely sure that these nails went in cleanly. Even though this shingle does have adhesive, I went ahead and nailed it on anyway. I made sure to use a shortened nail in the front and center of the house because otherwise it could have protruded through the roof unsafely. I'm not attaching any mounting hardware at the moment, but there are a few options available. 
The first is to use a T-bracket. You can also take advantage of the front opening to drill right through the back panel. Now that the Owl House is fully built, I'm going to go ahead and sign my name. Okay, so there we have it. Now that you've seen how to build the box, there are some important things that we need to cover if you want to actually entertain owls in this thing. Like I said in the intro, this box is suitable for small screech owls. If you live in the United States, you're in luck. Screech owls can be found in every one of the 50 states. Depending on which side of the Rockies you find yourself, you'll either be hosting eastern or western screech owls. While they are similar, they are different species. Screech owls are very opportunistic. Unlike many birds, they do not build their own nests. What that means is that it's important to add several inches worth of dry leaves or wood shavings to the bottom of your box if you want it to stand out as a great nesting location. When you mount the box, using one of the methods I shared a few moments ago, the goal is to get it 10 to 12 feet off the ground adjacent to a fairly open area. You want to make sure that owls have a clear path in and out of the box. You can mount it on the side of a building, on a pole, or even in a tree. Just make sure that the branches aren't too dense around the box. The best direction to place the opening of the box is to the south, but as long as it's not facing directly to the north, you should be okay. This helps keep weather out of the box. Screech owl nesting patterns can differ a bit depending on your region. As a general rule of thumb, you're going to want to make sure to have the box in place by the new year if you want to have a shot at gaining a resident by early spring. It may take more than one year to actually host an owl, so don't be discouraged if you don't have one in your nesting box right away. Once you do, you'll be encouraged to know that screech owls tend to return to their nesting locations each and every year. Make sure that you clean out and reset the box every year to keep the owls coming back. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss the next build or project walkthrough. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.